All right, y'all, welcome back to Common Arms Channel. So today's video is actually going to be a reaction about a video from the NATO YouTube channel, which I didn't know existed until, I guess, right now when I found the video. But it's definitely something I wanna check out. It wasn't a recommendation from any of y'all, it was actually a, a recommended video uh, that was on the side while I was checking out one of your recommendations. But it's definitely something that I wanted to check out because I think it, it'd be a pretty interesting dynamic for me to wrap my head around. But this video it's titled how to become a norwegian conscript and i think it'd be cool to sort of check out how that actually works now i know conscription services are you know a little bit different depending on where you're actually from and what country you're actually serving in but you know in the united states we don't have a conscription or a mandatory service we have like the selective service which you know you have to sign up for in case there's a draft you might get chosen for a mandatory service but I, in, in Norway, I guess there's a certain age range. And when once you reach that age range, or if you're like 17, I think you sign up, you fill up some forms. And then I guess 15% of the people who, who fill out those forms and are in that age range get selected for the conscription and for, for service. Now, I'm not sure exactly how long the, the service is, but I know, you know for the US military, it's either three years. I know the Army offers like three-year contracts, but in the Marine Corps, it's generally four to six years that you're volunteering for, for service. So it's different for me because, again, I volunteered. It's something that I wanted to do. But it'd be, it'd be interesting to see how it works out for people who didn't necessarily want to join the military or even people who are like against the military uh, to see how that actually works in with the service. Now, I'm not sure if there's like, it seems like from what, what I've seen, there's different conscripted units, you know, where conscriptions go into these certain units and they don't get mixed up with people who actually continue to serve. Um, but I don't know exactly how that works. I'm not sure if that's actually accurate for every country or if it's even accurate at all. So if you could provide some context, if y'all could share your experiences or, you know, give me a little more information or maybe even fact check some of the stuff in this video. So I, I can better wrap my mind around how the conscript service actually works and see if it's actually effective. But definitely excited to check this video out. Now again, if you guys haven't seen my merch, I'll put a link down in the description. Feel free to check it out. There's a lot of cool stuff for you guys to choose from, a lot of cool products. Um, their shipping is a little bit slower now, I think just because of the whole COVID-19 stuff and whatnot. So that's kind of a bummer. But definitely feel free to, feel free to order some stuff. I want to be transparent as much as possible with y'all, uh, a lot of times the, the shipping might get a little bit slowed down by a couple of days just because of the whole COVID thing. So uh, definitely feel free to check it out anyway. I think I might have a new design up. If I do, I'll put that in uh, with my with my shop on Redbubble. If not, then you guys can expect that design soon. But uh, it's a very cool design. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited to introduce some more channel specific stuff and some better designs um, for, the, for the merch itself. But definitely feel free to check that out. And if you guys aren't subscribed, I would appreciate that as well. That's totally free and it really helps support the channel and helps build our community together. But uh, yeah, let's get into this video. Again, NATO YouTube channel. We'll see how you guys actually do with your, uh, with your production and your YouTube team. These soldiers are from Norway, a country where it's compulsory for 17-year-olds to sign up for national service. However, only around 15% of that age group are selected each year. I was, uh, okay, real quick, I gotta say, whenever you're digging with one hand, you're not having a good time. <laughs> I don't know what they're, what they're digging for. They might be digging like a fighting position, but this dude's digging with one hand, and that usually means he's like, He's going internal, as we would call it. He's just thinking about other things. He's just like, all right, let me just move this dirt. I, I don't know if it's different for y'all, if, if I'm just taking that out of context, but that's what I'm seeing here. An apprentice as a, um, uh, a lift engineer. So I built and serviced uh, lifts. In the beginning, it was really hard. It was much uh, harder than I imagined. But uh, it was also fun. I learned learned a lot the selection process begins by <laughs> there he is again everyone has to fill out but there's one question so is that if, if that's a lift engineer then it might make a little more sense why he's bummed out for for digging some holes but okay it looks like i haven't been to lot latvia myself but the the ground looks pretty good for digging so that's kind of nice for them at least but yeah i'm not sure what they're actually doing here they might just be digging some fighting positions or doing something, they might be building. He said he was a lift engineer, so he might be building something. 
But um, yeah, pretty cool. I guess it's going to be like a lot of interviews and getting a bunch of different points of view um, from these different conscripts. So that's pretty cool to see. Then uh, do you want to join or no? So um, it's one year uh, where you do a lot of different stuff. Okay, it's so uh, quite uh, different from being a civilian. A year. We are actually very fond of that system because we think it works and it really gives uh, a bigger uh, connection between our armed forces and the population, which gives a broader perspective on defense within the population than we think we would have if we had an all-volunteer force. That is a very, very good point. So again, I, I've worked with the Israeli Defense Forces a lot, and I know they have a mandatory service there in Israel. And from what I've noticed is that the general populace or like the civilians have a much better appreciation for what the military actually goes through and you know they, they understand the military because most people have to serve and if they don't serve themselves because of like a health condition or, or something they have like a lot of friends or relatives who have served so they get a lot of exposure and experience uh, and knowledge about the military through all these different people or, or having served themselves so it's really cool to have everyone have a good appreciation for what the military actually does because the United States is a really big disconnect between like the the one percent of the people who are serving in the military and, and the, the rest of the 99 percent that a lot a lot of them i would say you know 90 percent at least really don't know what the military is like or they don't have any close friends or relatives that that they talk to about the military so there's a big disconnect there which uh it, it kind of sucks because a lot of people don't necessarily know what what the military is like and they can appreciate what sort of hardships people are actually going through at certain points but it's very cool that he's saying that it does make a lot of sense how everyone has a better appreciation for what people are doing and 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 how the defense of the the country actually goes into play when you're talking about your job in the military most of these soldiers are conscripts nearing the end of their training they're in latvia taking part in an exercise which pits nations against each other and scores them on their defensive and offensive tactics. Nice. It's it's pretty cool actually to see how much we as a conscript who has trained for 10 months can uh, weigh out against uh, professional soldiers who have been in the army for example six years. Hmm. We fought against the Estonians the other day and we won uh, both the battles. Oh, some smack talking. So, uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> After training, most soldiers okay. return to civilian life. 21-year-old Martin Larson works as a supply teacher back home. Now I'm going back to that school again for first and mm. then move out of home <laughs> and yes, study some more and find out what I really want to do. Some yeah, so that's also a really good point. So I, I will say real quick, their, their accents are like almost non-existent for, for some of them. So I'm kind of impressed how well Norwegians can actually speak English and I've noticed uh, I can understand a lot more Norwegian than I can any other language. I don't know why, it just sounds more like English, and I think it uses more English words. And then what he was saying was pretty cool because he's a teacher, he's going back to civilian life soon, and that's uh, that's definitely hard for a lot of people to wrap their mind around. It's, it's hard to do that transition, but you do have to remember that everyone, uh, or at least a lot of the people in that country, have served at some point or know people who served. So the transition wouldn't be as hard, but it is still hard to have to refocus back to civilian life when you've been in the military, even for a year. When you're, you know, when you're doing military stuff for a year, you do have this, uh, you know, this mindset and this focus of, you know, being in sort of the, that military cog and, you know, going back to civilian life and having to transition to where you're being more independent is a little bit hard for some people, especially when, uh, you know, some people might think of the military service as something that's getting in the way of what they want to do because everyone has an idea of what they want to do when they're grown up. And a lot of times it's not necessarily in the military. So when they do have to serve, it, it might be something that just seems like it's getting in the way and it, it's kind of a pain in the butt that they have to do it. But it seems like you had a pretty good attitude about it. But again, that's just something you have to consider. It is pretty hard to, to have to refocus on doing something that, might be completely different from what you're doing in the military. Some conscript service services don't necessarily align you with what you've been doing or what you plan to do in the civilian world. So it's just things to consider. Reservists, while others apply to enlist. Sergeant Rasmus Rindal has served for three years. I have a bachelor's degree in uh, finance and that was uh, 
That was what I wanted to do, uh, become a stockbroker, uh, actually. <laughs> but it was the comradeship that made the 25-year-old decide to stay on. Working hard, uh, big backpacks, long walks, it makes uh, <laughs> strong bonds between people. Sure. Uh, and uh, that's uh, what I like the most about it. Uh, and also the career uh, opportunities, of course. Yeah, that, that's also true. Because when you're in the when you're in the civilian workforce, it does take a lot longer to really appreciate or, or reach certain promotions. But in the military, you know, you can get a better appreciation for what you're doing if you're constantly, you know, getting promoted or getting awards or what have you. In the civilian world, it's not necessarily the same. There's not as many accolades you you can actually reach. You know, if you get promoted, that's one thing. But a lot of times, it can take a, a very long time to to see those promotions or even get more opportunities in the work that you're actually doing. So I can appreciate that he was saying that. And I can also appreciate what he was saying about how the how the hard work builds camaraderie and companionship because when you have like a team going through a shared hardship, it, it's a huge bonding experience for everyone because you know it, it's crappy for you, but you also know it's crappy for everyone else and you're all doing it together. So. It, when you're doing like a, a civilian job, you don't necessarily have the same connection just because you might not have the same interests or experiences. But when you're in the military, especially in the infantry, and you're doing all this crappy stuff, you know there's a bunch of people that know exactly what you're going through. And it, it's easy to talk to them about that because they've gone through it as well. Of course. Norway's national service dates back 200 years. Ever since the creation of the country's constitution, which states that any citizen between the ages of 18 and 44 can be called upon to defend the country. It was last used during the Second World mm. War when uh, soldiers were mobilized uh, following uh, the German Nazi invasion uh, on Norway, the attack on 9 of April 1940. Uh, that was when we last used it for defensive purposes in Norway. Mm. Since then, Norway has been involved in very few conflicts but its defence spending has been increased this year by more than 3%. Nice. Like some other NATO allies, the country is facing increased tension in Europe and is making moves to bolster its defences. Mm. At least with national service, it has guaranteed boots on the ground available. <laughs> if it would be a real crisis and uh, someone uh, wants to attack Norway, then of course uh, it's my duty to uh, to defend. Reporting for NATO Channel, this is Mel Green. <laughs> so that's awesome how you have someone who is trying to be a stockbroker care so much about the defense of his country now because he was able to get a better appreciation for everything. You know, he's an infantryman and that's not an easy life and it's a hard thing to, to wrap your mind around, you know, what your job might actually entail. But if you're serving in the military and you have this conscription, you get a, a better idea of why the military does certain things and, and how you would actually fit in because if you can understand what your job is and what your purpose is in the whole, you know, in the whole machine, you get a better appreciation and motivation for being able to, to go and serve your country when it actually needs you. And I think that's why there's a big disconnect in, in the United States. We don't have the conscription, so a lot of people don't understand the military. So they don't necessarily understand the points of a lot of stuff and they don't feel uh, you know, influence to support the military in a lot of different uh, regards. But it's cool how, the, how Norway's actually doing it and how people are able to wrap their mind around it. And they were saying that they're increasing their defense budget by 3%, which doesn't seem like too much. And a lot of people, you know, might, might make a big deal of that. But 3% of a defense budget or 3% increase can go a long way, at least for the infantrymen. If you get all the infantrymen, like new equipment, and they're more mobile and whatnot, you can have way better lethality just from doing that. So if one year you increase the defense budget by 3%, it can, it can really do a lot to increase the, uh, the motivation and the lethality of the, of the conscripts. And I mean, they seem like they're doing a pretty solid job. I mean, it's only a one year thing. A lot of people might go into it with a bad attitude, thinking, you know, I just need to get this one year over with, but it's cool how they're actually getting a good appreciation for why it actually means something and, and why they actually have that conscript service and why it dates back, you know, 200 years. 
Now, Norway has been involved in different conflicts since World War II, not as much as other countries, just because their interests and their investments are, are different, and they're not invested in certain conflicts as much. You can see they're, they're doing their parts, and they're also doing their, their part in making sure that their conscripts are well-trained, which is you know the least that they can do for someone who, who might have to go to the defense of the country. So it's good to see that they're actually uh, they're doing their job well. You can see that they're effective against the professional soldiers who have been serving for several years. So as long as you're doing your training right and you're doing it effectively and you have good leadership, you can be a pretty lethal force. But again, that 3% defense budget is probably gonna help out. Um, you know, even again, if you're just talking about the infantry man, it can help them out a lot. So it's cool to see how they're actually investing a little bit more in their military so they can see their returns in the end. But this is a really cool video. Again, we don't have like a conscription in the United States, so it's hard for me to sort of wrap my mind around it. But I do, I, I can definitely see the, the pros to, to actually having that. And I think, honestly, I think most countries uh, should actually adopt some sort of conscript or mandatory service. Uh, I think me personally, I would definitely be in favor of the United States doing it. Now you would get um, certain people that wouldn't be interested in doing it, so you might have a deterioration in the discipline. But if you have certain uh, units with a, you know, a dedicated leadership and, and training, then they can actually be pretty effective and they can definitely get their mind wrapped around what they're actually doing or what they might be called to do. So. But I might have to check out more videos from the NATO YouTube channel because that was a pretty solid one. And I do appreciate how they were able to, to speak English so well because I can't speak any Scandinavian language whatsoever. So it is cool to, to see that and, and hear them actually putting in that, the effort to make a cool video for the channel. But yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Definitely feel free to share your experiences about the conscription or, or your time serving in a, in a conscript unit. But it's very cool to see how that dynamic actually works, especially when you're talking about the normal population. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely feel free to keep those recommendations coming. If you want to send any recommendations for videos about other conscript units or, or conscript training, that'd be cool to check out as well. But yeah, very cool to see that they're actually doing their job very well and they're getting the good training that they actually need. But that is it for this video. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you all in the next one.